Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a video all about my c-section, what happens, what to expect, things nobody tells you. Um, so it is going to be a little bit of a lengthy video. So settle in. I have my drink right here. It's just a um, like a ginger club soda. And let's get started. So why did I have a c-section? I actually went in when I had my very first appointment, when I had the um, pregnancy test, when I found out I was pregnant, I went in to see my doctor. She confirmed that I was, and that day I requested a C-section. Now they don't just go, mm, okay. They kind of listen to your reasoning and they go, well, we'll decide when it gets closer to the date. So I was worried that I would have problems with my eyes. I have retinopathy. My eye my blood vessels can hemorrhage if there's any type of like heavy lifting or pushing or anything where it like puts pressure on your eyes my blood vessels will pop and i will lose sight in that eye so my worry was that i would be pushing and during labor my eye would hemorrhage and then i would have problems for months having a newborn um, and being blind um it just i wanted to avoid that at all cost so my doctor said, I don't see why it should be a problem, but we're gonna wait and see until you get closer to the date. And I was seeing my regular OBGYN and also a high risk pregnancy doctor. So they were both kind of, you know, keeping track of me and seeing what was happening. And we decided to have the C-section, scheduled C-section when Paul measured over eight pounds when he was at 30, when I was at 33 weeks. So his gestational weight at 33 weeks was over eight pounds already. And you normally it's 40 weeks for a full pregnancy, full term. So <laughs> he was big and he was breech. He never turned. He was always in the same spot with like his head was like right here in my ribs and his butt was on my bladder for the entire third trimester. <laughs> So they said, you know what, he's measuring really big, he's going to be really big, uh, we're going to sign off on a C-section for you. And we went at 37 weeks because of my kidney function and everything. They wanted to kind of get him out at the earliest they could safely do it. So at 37 weeks, you are considered full term. So we did 37 weeks in two days. And so he was due June 2nd of last year and I had him May 14th. So essentially they just go, okay, we'll call you the week before. <laughs> so I was scheduled for my C-section at 35 weeks. So two weeks before the actual C-section, I was scheduled for the C-section. So they just call you and they go, what day do you want it? <laughs> and we picked, well, we wanted to do um, May 10th. So it was 5, 10, 20 because we're stupid. Um, <laughs> but it was a Sunday, it was Mother's Day. So they couldn't do a Sunday C-section. I guess if you're going into labor and you need a C-section, they'll do it, but you can't schedule one on a Sunday. So she said, I really want to do it Thursday. I don't want you too far past 37 weeks. So we did Thursday, May 14th. So I had to change all of my settings four hours before surgery um, because literally as soon as the baby's out, your um, like insulin resistance, everything drops. So you kind of start to go back to normal like immediately. So I had to get up super early because my we had to go in at 5 a.m. for pre-op and then 7 a.m. was the C-section. So I woke up at 4, I want to say, no, 3, I think, and changed all of my pump settings. And I barely got any sleep that night anyway, obviously, but I will insert a little clip here. Um, I just recorded a little something that morning. Hey guys, um, so... It is the night before my C-section. <laughs> And I'm so anxious. I can't sleep. It's about 1 a.m. Um, May 14th. Uh, we were all packed up, ready to go. Um, and I can't sleep. And I have my alarm set for 3.30 because I have to change my pump settings at 3.30, four hours before surgery, uh, to raise all my basal rates up by half. So <clears throat> all my aggressive rates are being taken way down. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, but yeah, I figured I'd kind of start the video here and then I'll video a little bit before we get to the hospital, then once we get in and then as much as I can video 
in the operating room, which I don't know if I can video at all, or my fiance. So yeah, my biggest, um, not my biggest <laughs> worry, but one of my worries is that my blood sugar is gonna drop and I'm not allowed to eat anything six hours before surgery, which is in about half an hour. Um, so I had a little bit of Coke and because my blood sugar was trending down and I still had half a unit on deck. So I had a little bit of Coke and I'm gonna sit at the computer and edit a video. And yeah, I will catch up with you guys in a few hours. So the week before you have um, someone call you and you register and all that good stuff, you have to get, um, if you have to get blood work, you get it. I don't think I had any blood work. I did have to get a COVID test. Um, at that point, COVID was running wild and free. So they were making sure everybody had it before they came. So I went a couple days before, got my results back, negative, and then we were able to go forth with the C-section. So the morning of, we get there, we just sign in, a nurse comes out, she takes us to our room. I got hooked up to all the machines. They ran blood work, they took my blood sugar. Although there is no anesthesia, um, they don't want you eating anything. So I was fasting for about eight to 10 hours beforehand. I also, funny enough, was having contractions, 10 minutes apart. I didn't feel anything, but my doctor came in and she was just checking on me. And she was like, do you know you're having contractions? On the machine they were like showing and I had no idea. So I think he was trying to come that same day because they were very, very consistent at exactly 10 minutes. Either that or it was just a really weird coincidence. But so you're all hooked up, you have everything going on, people are coming in and out, they're asking you questions. I was given heartburn medication. My heartburn was so bad, they actually gave me medication through the IV and it helped so much. Um, so everyone's kind of coming in and out and they're letting you know what's gonna happen. We actually were delayed half an hour, so we went in at 7.30 instead of seven. But my fiance and I were just sitting there talking and you know, if I had any questions, I could just ask the doctor. And they came by, they put me um, in like a different gown and a hairnet and everything and they suited up my fiance. He was head to toe, looked like a doctor with scrubs and, and um, gloves and everything. So they were very, very, very clean and very um, sanitary. And we actually, I couldn't have anybody in the room when I registered for the hospital. They said, nobody can be in the OR with you. And I was hysterical. And then the day before they called me and they said, we're gonna let you have one person. <laughs> so very happy for that. So they actually had me walk. So they didn't like wheel me in. I just walked to the operating room and it was just me at first. I went in. And you know, everything's like bright and, and it's a little cold in there and, and you're freaking out nervous. <laughs> but um, we just went in and they had me sit down and we got started. So the first thing was the epidural. It was painful. Um, it wasn't awful. And if I had to do it again, it would not be a problem, but it was painful. And it was a little bit of like a deep pain where I felt it like in my lung. <laughs> So they kind of have you like bend, like kind of bend forward to um, expose your back. And then like this, I was, I had a huge belly. Um, I will sprinkle pictures throughout this video too. I had a huge belly. So it was so hard for me to sit forward, but you just feel them kind of rub the alcohol and they go, okay. And then they feel the needle go in and you're just like, oh, like you want to like bend and just go like, oh, but you're not allowed to. And the nurse was in front of me, she was holding my hands and she was, I was just like, squeeze if you have to, you know, and I'm just kind of sitting there like squeezing, trying not to move. Um, but it was over within 45 seconds. I mean, it was super quick. And I know some women have trouble with epidurals and I can't imagine that pain um, because it was very uncomfortable, but they take it out. They only leave it in if you're in actual physical labor so that they can add more if needed because you could be in labor for hours and to days. So, but for me, it was just, we need it for the surgery and that's it. So they took out the needle. They didn't leave anything in, which was nice because having the idea of a catheter in my, in my spine is just, mm -mm. so I remember sitting on the table and the doctor, you know, or the uh, anesthesiologist is sitting behind me and I'm like, when do I start to feel? And my legs went numb. <laughs> I mean, dead weight. So the nurse took my legs and put them, put them down and had me lay down. So something they don't tell you is that if you're not shaved down there, they will actually shave a little bit for you because where they cut is super low. So 
that will happen. Um, the other thing is they put in a catheter, hopefully after you're numb. Mine was after I was numb, I didn't feel a thing. So that stays in until the feeling comes back and you're able to walk to the bathroom. And behind me on this side was my fiance. They had brought him in while, while um, they were like setting up, getting everything ready and while I had the catheter in and everything, they brought him in. To my right was the anesthesiologist. He was amazing. He was like, any questions? If you feel anything, you know, you have questions, just ask me, I'm right here with you. So it was awesome having just support all over. And then they had the sheet in front of me so I couldn't see my stomach. And I had two doctors, two amazing doctors. One of the doctors was my regular um, gynecologist that she's been with me for four years. So it was awesome having her in there. And then the other one was a really, really nice doctor from the hospital. And then just a bunch of nurses. One of the nurses was just the sweetest woman ever. She was awesome. So they literally go, you ready? And they give you antibiotics through your IV while you're laying there. My heart was thumping. It was like a hundred beats per minute. And I'm just kind of laying there and I'm like asking the anesthesiologist, I'm like, is my heart right okay? I feel like it's popping out of my chest. Um, and then I did get a like metal taste in my mouth, which I also asked him about that. He said, that's just from the antibiotics. So that was normal. And they just go, you ready? And I said, yep. And they just started to cut. You feel nothing. I mean, nothing, no pressure, nothing. Um, the pressure comes when they start to remove the baby. So they do keep you posted kind of what they're doing, what they're seeing. So they're like, you know, we have the baby, we're cutting through this, we're doing that. And, um, they basically just take him like i said he was breached so they took his butt and they were like twisting him and the other doctor was like elbow deep into my ribs like pushing and then she was pulling and and you're just like oh my god but it you know you don't feel anything you just feel pressure and tightness and pulling but no pain whatsoever so the moment that was really weird to me and the doctor was like okay you're gonna feel like you can't breathe for a second and when they pulled him kind of past my lungs, like I guess my lungs were squished up, um, I just went, ah, oh, like the, the breath just left and I couldn't breathe for a second. It was super weird. It wasn't like, I can't breathe. It was more like, oh, like you're like, oh, wow. that It lasted a second, so you just go, oh, wow, that was weird. And then it's over. So they were twisting him and, and he was hard to get out. He was 10 pounds, 12 ounces. He did not want to come out. But they just twisted him and pulled him and they got him and you feel it. Like when they take the baby out, you feel it. You're just like, like it, it, it's just like a weird release of pressure. So they grabbed him and you know, they did everything and we're just waiting for him to cry. And then he goes, ah, <laughs> like a Furby. <laughs> so, he made that noise first and then he started crying and just like thinking about that moment is amazing. <laughs> well, not cry in this video. So then Doug went over to the table and he was watching them, you know, and they're like, it's a beautiful boy. Like we knew obviously, but, um, and then they were like 10 pounds, 12 ounces and everyone's like, whoa, you know, and I was shocked because the last weight I had heard was eight pounds, seven ounces, I think when we had one of our um, ultrasounds. So I was shocked. <laughs> I knew he would be over nine pounds, but I didn't think he would be almost 11. I, that's it for the surgery part. Um, then they sew you back up. And that takes a good 30 minutes to 45 minutes of sewing you back up and getting everything back in place and all that fun stuff. So you're just kind of laying there and you can talk to people or you just listen to the doctors. Um, and you're just kind of laying there and you're like, okay, I just had a baby. I am no longer pregnant. And you just kind of, there's a lot of emotions and a lot of things going on. And they don't give you any sedation because of the baby. Um, so you're not sedated. You're just kind of there with your thoughts. And you're like, I cannot believe that just happened. So when they're finished, um, the doctors leave and the nurse actually goes in. And she presses really hard on your stomach just to kind of, I guess, make sure everything's in place. And I remember her saying, you're going to be okay with me doing this now, but we're going to have to do it later once your um, epidural wears off. I didn't know what to expect, <laughs> but it wasn't that. So you basically just get wheeled back. They took him to, um, to the nursery and to uh, just make sure everything was good because I'm a diabetic. They had to test his blood sugar, make sure that was fine. Otherwise, he'd have to go to NICU. But 
so when we left, um, we went to a room and he came, they wheeled him in like 10 minutes later. I did have a reaction to the antibiotics, nothing crazy, but I was very dizzy and nauseous for pretty much that whole day. Um, and then I threw up, which was a horrible pain because it pulls at your stomach when you throw up. So it was like, it was pulling at that incision and it was so painful. Um, but I threw up a few times and I felt a little bit better. And they said, it just, I had a reaction to the antibiotics that they give you during surgery. Then they bring in the baby and they literally just latch him on you. Like they kind of help you latch him. And I was able to breastfeed for about two days and I'll go over why I stopped. Um, but yeah, they latch him on and you just go, I'm breastfeeding. Okay, cool. Let's, let's do it. And you have this little baby in your hands and it's just insane. It's absolutely insane that they just ripped a baby out of you and you're they're like, okay. Um, so, and they put those like muscle, like they squeeze your muscle, like in your legs, so you don't get any blood clots or anything um, while you're recovering. Um, it took about six hours for the numbness to wear off completely, two hours for it to start wearing off. So it started at two hours, took about six hours and it completely had worn off. Um, then they go, okay, so whenever you can stand up, go to the bathroom and you have your first bowel movement, like you're good. That's when essentially they're like, okay, you're probably good to go home if everything else is good. So I stood up and another thing they don't tell you, and this is pretty gross, you will lose a lot of blood out of down there. Not your incision, your, your area. Um, it will literally just splash on the floor. Um, so that happened. I was mortified. The nurse was like, honestly, it happens all the time. So they give you this humongous pad. I mean, it's this big. And they give you these, this giant mesh underwear and you have all this on you and they walk with you to the bathroom and you sit down and the nurses are with you in the bathroom. They're like cleaning you down there and they're like, you doing okay? You know, is it hurt to pee? Because even though you're not in actual labor and you're not having a vaginal birth, there's still things that happen down there with a cesarean. There's very similar pain. Um, you know, a, a, a different things that I'm actually going to go over too. So they're asking a million questions and they're, you know, are you okay? This, that, and the other. So very, very helpful. So they put this kind of like, um, Velcro wrap around your stomach to keep everything tight. So they'll come in every few hours, they'll unvelcro it and they'll press on your stomach and that But it's just like a couple seconds and you're done and then they wrap you back up and you just kind of you're just kind of laying there i mean you have this baby hey guys so i didn't end up vlogging at all yesterday after the c-section um because i was beat up <laughs> um so he well first of all <laughs> oh baby um he was 10 pounds 12 ounces so huge and he was three weeks early. So I got pretty beat up in the process of them getting him out. Um, so it was a lot of pain. Um, I threw up a bunch from the, they said the epidural. Um, and then I was just super dizzy. Like I felt like I was on some type of painkillers, but I wasn't, but I was like super dizzy and like lightheaded, just kept getting nauseous and sick. And then Yesterday was really hard because everybody kept coming in, trying to get me to breastfeed him, you know, asking questions, filling out forms, and I'm just like trying not to vomit. <laughs> and like, um, so I didn't vlog anything yesterday, but we're doing well. Um, we did not sleep. He was really fussy the entire night, so I did not sleep barely any anything at all um I took a nap at like 7 a.m to like 9 a.m and then I woke up when the pediatrician came in to check him out and yeah it looks like we're gonna be going home tomorrow so we're just staying two days uh and my parents are here so I'm super excited to have help I don't know what I'm gonna do when they leave I don't wanna I don't know what I'm gonna do when they leave I don't wanna think about it because I'll cry <laughs> um But yeah, uh, my, you know, they put in a catheter, my catheter is out, 
the feeling came back into my legs probably about three hours after the c-section so very very quickly um my IV is out if you can see I am going to take a shower in a minute which is going to be so nice I'm just a little scared because I have to take off the big bandage that's over my stomach where it's cut um so that kind of scares me just taking that off I don't want to or anything um it's super weird like it's so soft it's like just a little pouch um yeah so here we are yeah, it's it's incredible at night um they came in they removed the catheter you feel it but it just kind of feels like you're pulling something out of you really fast i don't know how to explain it like a tampon like you're pulling it really fast um you just get that out and then you're good as far as that goes they do want you to kind of get up and walk around. So I was walking down the hallway and coming back, down around the other way, the other hallway, coming back. So that helped. It helped with the pain because once the anesthesia wore off, um, I was crying in pain. I was begging them to give me some type of medication. I went in there going, I'm not going to have any, you know, I don't like to take pain meds. And I was like, I won't take any pain meds. I was yelling for pain meds and they had to give me Tylenol every two hours. I think it was on like 2000 milligrams a day. <laughs> It was, it was painful. I mean, they, you, they, they move your insides. They, they cut through tissue, skin, muscle. You know, they get to your organs. It's, it's insane. So the healing process of a C-section is a little tough. Um, but you can take medication and, and it does help. And they do prescribe you something when you leave the hospital as well. If you need to take something a little more um, heavy like uh, ibuprofen. They don't give you like Vicodin, but they'll give you like an 800 milligram ibuprofen or a Tylenol. So for me, my recovery was really quick. I was ready to go home after two days. The reason we stayed for an extra day was because Ollie had jaundice and his levels were climbing very, very high. Um, I think they said they liked the babies to be under eight and he got up to 16.1. So he was climbing very fast. So they had me stop breastfeeding, but they didn't have me pump. So I stopped breastfeeding, my breasts got so engorged. I mean, they were this big and hard as cement and that was really painful. So I started pumping a day and a half later and it was just too late. I had already started to lose my milk supply. I would pump eight times a day and get half an ounce of milk. Not each time, just total. So yeah, it, it just, my milk supply stopped, but it was good when, when I started breastfeeding him, it was good. But once my breasts got engorged and um, I hadn't pumped for about a day and a half, then I started to lose that supply. You lose it quick. And then when we got home, I was experiencing postpartum depression and I didn't eat. So I had nothing, you know, the milk, you have to eat, you have to keep a good diet in order to keep breastfeeding to keep that milk production up. And I, I wasn't. So they also give you a bunch of extra stuff when you're in the hospital. They give you little formula bottles and diapers and, and onesies and, you know, um, those like nipple, uh, things that help you breastfeed. Um, they feed you obviously, but they're great. And they give you a lot and they have like a lactation consultant come in and they have the pediatrician come in and they make sure baby has their first poop and he's eating right. And they have you write down every feeding, every pee, every poop, every diaper change, all that good stuff. So it's easy in the beginning because you have a lot of people helping you. They have like girls come in, they were helping like swaddle him and and uh, someone came and gave him a little sponge bath. It was it was a really sweet experience. Um, but the day of the surgery, it was just, it was a lot, it was a lot. But you know, like we talk about labor where you have the baby and you just kind of forget all that pain. You know, I couldn't really tell you what exactly that felt like. I just remember it hurt, but I mean, totally worth it, <laughs> totally worth it. So nurses come in every few hours, they test your vitals, they test baby's vitals, they take him to do blood work, they come in and test his hearing, they, they check his lungs, just make sure everything is going great. Because we had um, problems with him and jaundice, we had the pediatrician come in every morning and he would kind of tell us where the levels were. So the morning of Sunday, May 17th, yeah. The doctor came in and he was like, you know, his levels are still high, but they've plateaued. So we're kind of sitting there like, and he's like, you guys can go home. And I almost <laughs> cried my eyes out. I did after he left, but he sent us home with no, um, Billy blanket. So the Billy blanket is, um, so when they test for 
the for jaundas it's called your bilirubin so the level is a level of bilirubin so a billy blanket is basically like a plastic material it's a little hard it's a little bit like thicker um and it's a, a light it's a uv light so baby lays on it he had like a little mask on his little eyes and he laid under that light and he would like glow underneath it and that was supposed to help with jaundice and bring down the level so he was on that for uh, over a day and he's like maybe i'll send you home with one but they never did so we got home and the jaundice was like cleared up very very quickly but he was very orange he looked like he had a tan and then he became lighter and lighter and lighter and now he's you know a little little pale baby the morning we got released it was just so much excitement and then you're like packing everything and if there's one thing i will tell you do not overpack for the hospital I packed makeup and outfits and all this stuff and I bought all these things and iPad and headphones and I didn't use anything. I wore the same dress all three days. You're not going to want to do your makeup, do your hair. I mean, for me anyway, you're just going to lay there and be completely absorbed by your new baby. So if I had to say one thing, I would say don't worry about overpacking. As far as outfits, I would bring, obviously, a home outfit for you and a go-home outfit for the baby. But we got one from the hospital. Like, his had a little one says Vegas born on it. It was super cute. They had to bring him a three-month one. Mm -hmm. He didn't fit into the newborn one. <laughs> but, yeah, I all in all, it was a great experience. I feel like in that moment, like, labor and delivery, everyone is just so amazingly nice. And everybody calls you mama. And... Everybody called dog dad, like it, it's just so sweet what they do. And we had all great nurses and they all loved Paul and everybody would come in and like, be like, is, is this a really big baby? Like, can we look at your baby? And he was super chunky. Like I said, I'll just have photos all over this video. But yeah, um, by the time we were released by Sunday, I felt much better. I think I only took Tylenol maybe once or twice. So the pain goes away very quickly, but you do have to be careful with like bending down, picking things up, you know, your usual like restrictions after surgery. And even when you start to feel better, like you can do a lot of stuff, move around and do this, that, and the other, you still have to be careful because you're still healing on the inside. And I feel like it took probably about three to four months before I felt like, okay, I'm in a good place where I probably wasn't still fully healed, but I was doing a lot better. And for me, I had no stitches or staples on the outside. I had stitches on the inside, but I had just glue on the outside. So it was like a little thin line that's now a scar. And that was it. And it was just tape over it. And I was able to just shower with it and everything was fine. The one thing they say is just to look at for like um, signs of infection, swelling, pus, things like that. And then as far as um, also looking for big blood clots, if they were to come out, that's a problem. But other than that, yeah, that's pretty much the uh, hospital experience. Once I got home, um, I tried to breastfeed. I tried to pump for about 11 days, I think, after, and it just wasn't happening. And I started to get really depressed and I was just, I felt defeated. And I think part of that triggered my postpartum depression. If you guys want to see a really in-depth video on that, let me know down below and I will do like a, a serious sit down postpartum depression video. Um, but yeah, every time I went to pump, I would just cry and my breasts were so sore and my nipples were sore and everything just sucks and hurts and you're sitting there pumping and nothing is coming out and you're just like, what am I doing wrong? What is my body doing wrong? And it was too much. I didn't, I mean, he was amazing he was healthy I, it was okay to have him on formula so i stopped i did not breastfeed the little bit that i was able to breastfeed him i'm really happy about was his first few feedings were breast milk and i'm i'm really happy about that and i remember i had um a bag of breast milk i was able to freeze and i went to open it after i thought it and i spilled it everywhere and that was the moment that i just had had enough and i literally cried over spilled milk <laughs> And I said, I am done breastfeeding. This is too much. This is just too much. And I felt awful about giving up. Um, but, you know, other video. <laughs>
I'll, I'll do a video on that if you guys want. And they send you home with a ton of paperwork and they give you diapers, they give you baby um, like little mini formulas and they give you pacifiers and they just send you home with a bunch of stuff, a bunch of goodies. And then you make your appointment for like a week after that and then I think two weeks and then a month and then three months and, and then on and on. So we also did his circumcision at two weeks old. They say the earlier the better because their pain tolerance is different so it's not even that excruciatingly painful. I mean they're numb anyway so my worry was just the recovery but it was fine. We went in in the morning, they numbed him up, they did it. The worst part is they strap him to the table. So I left. Um, my fiance stayed. I, I left and I heard him crying in the in the waiting room but he was crying because he was strapped down to the table not because he was in pain he didn't want to be strapped down but I came in and he was still strapped and he was like this just strapped down and oh my god I'll never get that image out of my head so that's that was hard but they did it and and you know you put neosporin on it and then he was fine the next day he was totally fine was no pain no issues nothing I will link down below newborn essentials um, if you guys want to watch that video, some things I really loved when we were home with him that really, really helped. Um, so that'll be down below in the description box. And then leave me any questions that you guys have. I don't know if I missed anything. I had a, kind of my notes written down, so I think I got everything. But if you have any questions, listen down below and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.